modulated hydrogen frequency signal of 21 centimeters, Princess. What does that mean? We're not quite certain, Princess. But it is definitely the same signal we have been following since we left our planet. The source of the signals is the planet that we are observing on the telescanner now. These transmissions indicate some intelligent life. Let us move in for a closer look. The spectrographic probe indicates that the atmosphere is suitable to sustain us. Prepare for a landing. We will see. Instruct the landing party to wear pressure suits and breathing apparatus. Aha! They have launched a missile attack. It may be aimed at us. Destroy the missile. Yes, Princess. Focus full force field at 0, 090 degrees, range 700. And now, maximum energy. <laughs> what do we do if this guy fouls up today, Professor Steele? General, we've checked everything out. I'm absolutely confident that nothing can go wrong. I hope so. Now, we'll have to try it your way. We've already lost three boosters in a row. How are you doing, Miss Grant? longer before we reach the space center, Sergeant. About five minutes, sir.
We're going to be late with the story, but the latest word is that there's going to be a new man. I'm hanging up. They just walked in. General, sir, is it true that we heard that there's going to be a new man chosen? Gentlemen, take your seats. Gentlemen, please take your seats and the press conference will begin. Thank you, thank you. Gentlemen, we have just returned from our last meeting with our science advisors, and I'm happy to report that the launch is ready to go on schedule. The countdown will begin at 0800 tomorrow. And now, gentlemen, I want to introduce the astronaut chosen for this mission, Colonel Frank Saunders. Colonel Saunders will answer any questions that you might have. Frank? Dr. Steele is an optimist. What he means is I'll try to answer your questions. Uh, Colonel, aren't you just a little concerned about making a trip of 49 million miles alone? And when you do get to Mars, do you still expect to be alone, or do you expect to find other life? I'm completely trained and ready for this mission. I'm not concerned. Now, fear is either physiological or the result of ignorance and superstition. I'm in good physical condition, and I haven't had the time to get superstitious. On the basis of all available data, it would be impossible to determine conclusively whether or not there is life on Mars. That's one of the things I expect to find out. Colonel, we understand that the radio telescope located on the downrange island complex has been receiving signals in answer to their transmissions. Which may be from either another civilization or from a space vehicle itself. These signals could come from several sources. There's been no official agreement as to their origin. Nor has there been anything to prove that they were sent by other intelligent beings. Colonel, how did you get picked for this project? Aren't there more experienced astronauts available? My career in the military prior to this mission was in test flight operations. Now, as I understand it, all the data on available test pilots was fed into a computer, and the results seem to indicate that I am the most likely candidate. Of course, I'm proud and happy to have been chosen, but I make it a rule never to question the decisions of my superiors. Colonel, uh, I've been covering the space program for quite a long time, yet uh, prior to the day, I never even heard of you. How do you explain that? I guess I'm the shy type. Colonel? Colonel? Gentlemen, the Colonel wasn't kidding. He really is shy. He, uh, well, it's been a long day and we're all rather tired. Uh, so gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, uh, this press conference is concluded. Let's all clear the room now. Drinks at the office, oh, clubber on me. That's a good idea. Very very plenty good. of phones there, too. Yeah. Prepare for examination. Gloves. Quickly. Silica gel. I'm afraid we've still got a problem with the humidity in this atmosphere. Dr. Steele, I've been against this project from the beginning. I know you have, and I know that you are not alone. You have friends in high places, and science is supposed to have all the answers. But this has got to work. If it fails, I assure you, you won't have any friends. And I'm not going to take a fall. It's not going to fail, not after we've come this far. We have here, for all practical purposes, a normal human being created out of normal parts, transplanted, except for his synthetic skin and the electronic sensory control system, of course. But the significant factor here is that we can control him with this simple mechanism. His brain can record the 
data that we need and transmit it to us. He's a remarkable creation, all right. I don't understand why. We have plenty of men, good men, who are willing to risk their lives in space exploration. Exactly, risk their lives. Well, why risk one? We can learn all we need to know about extended space travel without the loss of a solitary life. That's the whole point, General. Besides that, we don't have to contend with the possibility of human error. And that's fine, Steele. But what if the machine breaks? Or something goes wrong with his brain? hope your creation doesn't fall apart. Still got a few miles to go, General. The airship has just been launched and is headed directly toward our sector. Do you suppose that they have seen us at this altitude, Dr. Nadir? The probability is low, Princess. We have kept our anti-radar detection at full force. Let us not take any chances. Commence attack plan on the Earth ship. <laughs> yes, Princess. Focus full force field at 090 degrees, range 700. We did it, Adam. We've proven again that science and the military can accomplish the impossible. And now, maximum energy. Mr. 
General Bowers. What's going on? I'll clear all frequencies from further traffic. Yes, Colonel. Mayflower 2, Mayflower 2, this is General Bowers. Over. This is Mayflower 2. Malfunction in all electrical systems. Request permission to abort. Rocket out of control. All systems, no go. I repeat, all systems, no go. <laughs> Use emergency escape equipment. Over. Mayflower 2, Mayflower 2. has ejected. Pilot? They have pilots on their missiles? You fool! That obviously was not a missile, but a spaceship. If they have sighted us, all of our plans will be endangered. We... we have lost him. Find him. Find him and destroy. We must land immediately. Stations for landing. Fire retro rockets. Activate pressure equalizer. Landing parts down.
The electronic sensor indicates the patrolmen in the vicinity. They should return momentarily. Shall I initiate preliminary pre-takeoff procedures? Wait until they return. Then we will initiate takeoff procedures and proceed with the optimum pollinization study as scheduled. Very well, Princess. I'll notify the crew. If we resume operations today, we will not have lost much time. What has happened here? We found him in this condition, Your Highness. There was no sign of the fugitive astronaut. We returned immediately with our comrade to receive further orders. He seems alive. He is alive, Your Highness, but badly wounded. He will require immediate treatment. Is he able to talk? We must know if he is able to talk. We must know if the fugitive has escaped. He is unconscious. But from what he told us, it would seem that the fugitive was badly wounded and has little chance of escape. If he was so badly wounded, how could he have attacked our patrolmen? Did you search the area? Did you see anyone? Was there no sign of life anywhere? Enough, Nadia. This is a clear case of failure. If the fugitive was able to inflict such damage on the patrol, he may be capable of escape. But that can ruin our plans. We cannot complete phase one of our survey or any part of our plans if we are detected. This is absurd. After all the reconnaissance work we have completed without successful detection, now to be forced into this position. In the past, we have always dealt with intruders easily. But now, so close to success, to have this happen. What are your orders, Princess? Shall we call in the rest of the patrols and take off? We cannot. We must commence phase two immediately. But we have not completed the survey yet. What if this area does not prove? We have no choice. I will talk to our men on the communicator. May we take this man in for treatment now, Princess? No. We will make an example of him. There can be no more failures. Bring him to Mull. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
communicator is ready, princess. The men are alerted and waiting your words. Of course, you all know why we left our planet home so suddenly. As a result of the recent atomic war, it was determined unfit for further habitation. At least until the radiation level decreases, you can consider yourselves fortunate to have been chosen for this crew. In case you don't know how fortunate you are, I will let Dr. Nadir tell you what is happening to those left behind. The lucky ones are dead. Of the others, some will go mad. The others will slowly rot away and die in gradual agony. We have won the war. We are the sole survivors. It belongs to us. But it means that we are extinct as a race, unless, of course, we can find some good breeding stock and repopulate our planet. We have won the war, but we have no women. We have come here to this planet for one purpose only, to acquire breeding stock to repopulate our planet. We have been placed in danger of detection by the recent failure of one of our patrols. And as a consequence, we must immediately begin phase two of our plan, capture of the Earth women. There it is again. I've lost him. Sorry. I don't know why we're doing all this. Well, it could be him. He could be out there somewhere, wandering around, hurt. You mean defective, inoperative? I know he's not human, but he's capable of experiencing pain. He could be suffering. What we've been picking up could be normal electronic interference from any number of possible sources. Our last contact was at liftoff plus 202. At that point, it had already been traveling. 1,500 miles. None of the downrange picket ships or island stations have reported any contact. Uh, the odds are a million to one you'll never see your boy again. Let's all get some sleep so we can write a good report in the morning. What if everything except the energy level, all the data communication, all the electronic memory were destroyed? Well, then he'd be a blank. An astro-robot without a control system. Oh, he could feel and experience things, but he wouldn't know anything. His instinct would be to try to connect with his master control. Of course, we don't know how much damage has been done to the physical machinery, but he wouldn't know where to go. He might wander for days, mobile but aimless. do? I don't know. It would depend on what had happened to him. If he'd had any bad experiences, he might react violently out of his built-in self-preservation unit. Anything could happen. What you're saying is that he could turn into a Frankenstein. <laughs> General Bowers. Is there positive identification? Let me know when anything more comes in. Right. They found the capsule in Puerto Rico. There was no one in it. We've also gotten reports that 
there was some violence in the area by someone who they said was wearing something that looked like a, a spacesuit. Those signals must be Frank after all. But what are those reports of violence? Just a moment. The reports are incomplete. We'll have more details when we get to the airport. We're leaving for San Juan tonight. understand that this is a good specimen, Nadia. I hope so. We have no more time for failures. I saw her myself. I feel you will be pleased, Princess. Come toward me. Now, move back. Turn around. Raise your arms to your side. 
Now, over your head. Now, lower your arms. Very good. We have done well, Nadia. <laughs> I am pleased, Princess. You are satisfied. I will be satisfied when we have enough more like her to commence phase three. Face all available men into this operation commencing at 1800 hours. As you remember, we found the car in the trees, parked, apparently unmolested. Picnickers were over here. But the most interesting thing we found was over here. Dr. Steele, I'd like you to explain this to me. It's like the sort of specimens we picked up around Los Alamos. May I use your radio to call headquarters? I want to advise defense to take this matter under our sole supervision. It is radioactive. But Adam, what is it? Well, it was sand. Now it's glass, fused together by some enormous concentrated heat. But what I can't understand is what that has to do with Frank. It couldn't have anything to do with Frank, Adam. We're going to find him somewhere down here. We'll have the situation under control soon. We've spotted that creation of yours. If he gives us any trouble, we'll bring you back the pieces. Adam, Frank has become so real to me that I can't bear the thought of his being hurt. Please, let's just get started. Karen, nobody's going to destroy ten years of my life's work. Hop on. Oh 
nearby. This way. The signal's very strong now. Wait a minute. Should be right down there. Come on. That's where he's got to be. Look, there's a cave here. Wrong place. I'm sorry. Thank you. You'd better get started back before it gets dark. I'll stay here and try to finish repairing Frank. Tell General Bowers that we've got to have some men. I'd rather stay with you, Adam. You've got to go and get the help, Karen. All right. Goodbye, Adam. Yeah. 
Let us go around and observe the <laughs> purification. <laughs> I am sure you will enjoy seeing what we have set up. has revealed no problems thus far. Yes, we found this device on one of the captives. Bring her to me at once. This is a very advanced looking mechanism for the society. What is this device? What is your purpose here? We have no time. You must answer. I warn you. Very well. I will force you to talk. Nadia, put her in the cage next to Mo. You have only a very few minutes to decide, my dear. General, we just received a twix from Washington. What's that? Alert all local forces, Puerto Rico, for Operation Area San Juan. They're asking us for full military support because... Oh, no, 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 no. I don't buy that, Colonel. Sounds like a, an ordinary brush fire action to me. There are reports of gunfire and unusual civilians. Probably Castro on that bunch. Eight missing persons. All women, it says here. At least three casualties, General. Also, radioactive materials found. And this is Code 24, General. Code 24. All right. I'll have all forces in action immediately. This is General Bauer speaking. Get me sink, land, fleet. Alert all forces. Area San Juan, Puerto Rico. Code emergency. Code emergency. <laughs>
We just can't wait for Karen. Careful. But don't try to talk anymore. Just be quiet and follow me. Don't look back, Frank. We're safe. I wonder where Karen is now. she's had enough, princess. Let me see if she has any other Earth devices in her satchel. outer space. That's the spaceship that they came here in. That's why Karen didn't get back to the cave. Now look, I think they've got Karen prisoner on that spaceship. And you've got to stay here and keep watch over things until I get help from General Bowers. You do that, Frank? All right. Good luck, Frank. Telephone? No, 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 no. A telephone. Telephone. Hello? Hello? A telephone. Telephone. El telefono! Thank you. Thirty-third commo detachment, Lieutenant Denny speaking. 
Listen, I've got to get word immediately to General Bowers. No, it can't be done, sir. Why? Because General Bowers is out on Project Mayflower. I know that. That's exactly why I've got to get this message to him. Now, look, you tell him that Dr. Adam Steele is reporting that he has sighted a spaceship two miles northeast of coordinates D1 and 18. I don't know, sir. I don't know whether I can relay a message like that or not. Nobody would believe it. You will have to believe me. I know that it sounds fantastic. Spaceship. I repeat, spaceship. All right, sir. If you insist, I'll relay the message to him. Hurry. Yes, sir. Bird Dog 1, Bird Dog 1, this is Camo 3, over. This is Bird Dog 1, over. Bird Dog 1, I have an urgent message from Adam Steele for General Bowers. Priority 1, over. This is Bird Dog 1, Camo 3, what is your message? Over. Adam Steele says he has found a spaceship. Spaceship? Is that the message? That's right, a spaceship at coordinates D118. Well, he's right below me. I'll relay the message. Over now. This bird dog one calling Red Hook. Urgent message for General Bowers from Adam Steele. Do you read me? this jeep around. Red Hook to base. Red Hook to base. Scramble the jets. Scramble all jets. Scramble all jets.
Frank. Frank, it's me. Frank. It's all right. It's me. This is Bravo High Three. I am nearing the objective. Minus two miles. Calling Red Hook for instructions. Bravo High, Bravo High. This is Red Hook. Go ahead. I've sighted the objective. Is there anyone near the ship? Negative. There was activity, but the area is clear now. Very well. Try a rocket barrage and report results immediately. Immediately. They have nuclear weapons, and if they use them, we are finished. Where shall we go, Nadia? We must leave immediately. Results of the last strike. General Bowers, you're not trying to destroy that spaceship. What are you doing? I'm absolutely convinced that Karen and at least two other women are aboard that spaceship. General, you've got to stop that attack immediately. Captain, get Bravo High and tell them to cease fire immediately. Bravo High, the orders are to cease fire. Stop the attack.